Hey guys, it's John V here with Phone Arena. So our smartphones have given us some amazing features through the years. Take for example, pinch zooming. It was a concept that was introduced to us by the original iPhone, and now it's used by every device out there. And honestly, it's a feature I think we can't live without. But in this video, I'm gonna be talking about some other things. I'm gonna be talking about some concepts that started off as interesting, but never really took off. So let's get started. So 3D movies were making their comeback in theaters with James Cameron's epic science fiction film Avatar showing us the wonders and awe of 3D in 2009. By the time 2011 rolled around, we got our first smartphones with 3D displays. The HTC Evo 3D and the LG Optimus 3D or here in the US, the LG Thrill 4G. Now these two smartphones offered one major difference from those 3D movies in theaters and that was they didn't require special 3D glasses to be worn. Instead, they relied on a glasses-free experience with the help of their respective parallax barrier displays. At first, the whole concept seemed really cool. Unfortunately, it never quite took the world by storm. Part of the reason was the lack of support from third parties. It never helps when there's barely any content to choose from, so the whole 3D display rage never had the chance to blossom. These phones also had the ability to shoot photos and videos in 3D, but you really couldn't share them with anyone because in order to view them in their original 3D form, you needed a phone with a 3D display in the first place. Ultimately, LG's interpretation fared a little bit better than that of HTC, eventually producing a second handset in 2012. After that, the concept pretty much went dead until the arrival of the Red Hydrogen 1 just last fall, which again reminded to us all that 3D displays on phones just can't cut it. Today's smartphone cameras are unbelievably well-versed when it comes to snapping amazing photos, with nearly every single flagship smartphone in circulation in constant contention for being the best of the best. Now, this wasn't always the case, as only a handful of smartphones were widely considered true camera phones. There was a time too when smartphones featured variable optical zooms with their cameras, like the Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom, the Galaxy K Zoom, and Asus Zenfone Zoom. The concept of variable optical zoom on a phone seemed practical, but while this definitely helped to get photogs closer to the subjects without being all too obtrusive and in their face, the addition of variable optical zoom in smartphones largely made them bulky in size. That of course was the result from having to house the additional components that were necessary. As a result, consumers didn't feel that getting closer was more beneficial over having a sleeker phone, which is why variable optical zooms never became widespread. Add to that, the improvements in today's camera phones, such as AI and multi-camera systems, have seemingly iced any chance for variable optical zoom to make a comeback. Watching something in your smartphone's display is great, but wouldn't it be better if you could share the view with others? Well, Pico projectors aim to do exactly that with some smartphones and other mobile devices. But despite their obvious advantages, they never quite caught on. Some early smartphones like the LG Expo featured an add-on accessory that brought along a mini Pico projector into its arsenal. Unfortunately, the accessory was a battery hog, it emitted a ton of heat, and using it comfortably required a very low lit room. The most recent integration of a Pico projector we've seen was in a tablet in the Lenovo Yoga Tab 3 Pro from 2015. Despite the advancements in Pico projector technology, having one built into a mobile device just doesn't quite make for a compelling standout feature because of the advent of wireless streaming. Ah yes, how can we forget about Samsung's air gestures? Even when they first rolled out with the Samsung Galaxy S4, air gestures were a questionable addition to what was then an already features-packed smartphone. Essentially, a sensor allowed the phone to detect when you're waving your hand over the phone's display to achieve some touchless controls, like vertically scrolling on a web page, scrolling through the picture gallery, and much more. Part of the reason why this feature was slowly phased from subsequent Galaxy phones was its lack of responsiveness. On top of that, it often felt like there was more work involved in waving your hand over the display as opposed to simply touching it. Need to vertically scroll on the web page? Just flick with your thumb or finger over the display. Simple enough, right? You bet, which is why it's not a feature that we don't see in other phones. 
Recently, however, we saw a similar implementation with the LG G8 ThinQ and its time of flight sensor. This may bring us closer to a practical touchless implementation due to the more precise and accurate tracking, but time will show us if that's the case. It's always a pain having to remember to carry around something to use with your phone, so you'd think that having something integrated would make things more practical, right? Bluetooth headsets are continually used by many people and offer great convenience with their hands-free experience, but it's tough to constantly remember to bring them around with us all the time. The LG Decoy from 2008 aimed to solve the problem with its integrated Bluetooth headset. That's right, this candy bar slider featured a handy Bluetooth headset that tucked into its back and would also charge when attached. However, the concept never really took off and it doesn't look likely that it'll be coming back soon. Honestly, it's tough to say why this didn't succeed, but it could be due to the fact that speakerphones in smartphones have improved, plus the popularity of texting and messaging apps make phone calls less of a priority. Regardless, we haven't seen a major phone manufacturer release a handset with any sort of integrated Bluetooth headset. Gaming has and always will be a relevant part of our mobile devices. Even the earliest handsets featured crude games that helped pass time, which you could argue to be the same in this day and age with some of today's freemium titles. While all phones are capable of running and playing games, there have been a few that have been specifically developed to be gaming devices. Take for example the Nokia N-Gage from 2002, which brought dedicated physical controls to a phone. The premise seemed like the perfect marriage, but as history has shown us, that wasn't the case. Similarly, the Sony Ericsson Play attempted to win us over as well in 2011 with its integrated controls. It failed as well to have a long-lasting impact, even though it had the backing of some old-school PlayStation games. Considering how Bluetooth gamepads can turn just about any smartphone into a gaming one, the concept of integrating physical controls just never became popular. For the N-Gage, the MMC base cartridges added to the burden of bringing them around and swapping them. Even though the Sony Xperia Play had the benefit of downloading games instead, there were still very few titles that really took advantage of its unique control setup. The smartphone display has come a long way since the early days. After the rise of capacitive screens, the company formerly known as RIM developed the clickable display with the BlackBerry Storm in 2008. Now, at first, the concept seemed like a neat idea, one that would offer that feeling of actually pressing into a display if enough force is supplied. Given BlackBerry's legendary keyboards, the company thought that the Storm's SurePress technology would become equally popular. My oh my how they were wrong about it. It's one thing to offer some sort of haptic feedback when typing away in a touch screen, but it's another to be required to push into a display to type. For many people who use the Storm, the act of typing seemed a bit more labored. Even though the SurePress touchscreen display was slightly improved with the Storm 2, it still failed to become a practical form of typing. With the eventual rise of swipe-based keyboard typing with the help of third parties, the SurePress keyboard was pretty much destined for failure. Right now, with the rise of foldable displays, the smartphone landscape is going through what's arguably another renaissance. After years of trying with other concepts, it seems as though we're on the verge of really having a foldable display in a smartphone that's practical to use. Before foldable displays, a few manufacturers were desperately trying to sell us on dual screen devices, the ones that featured two displays that came together to form a larger viewing experience. We're talking about phones like the Kyocera Echo from 2011, or more recently, the ZT Axon M from 2017. These dual screen devices never took off, partly because they couldn't overcome the technological challenges they face, like eliminating the bezel that was present when both displays came together. On top of that, they didn't necessarily enhance the experience in any capacity over other existing phones at the time. And worse yet, they just seemed to be hastily done, as if there was very little thought put into them. So far, it seems as though we should be still a little skeptical about these new upcoming gadgets with foldable displays, especially given the history we've seen with dual-screen smartphones. 
And that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It's kind of crazy to imagine that it's been so long since the BlackBerry Storm came out. I just remember using that phone and checking out that screen for the very first time. I touched it and I pushed in and I was just blown away by that click. But obviously using it after a while, it really wasn't practical. So what are some of your other features that you think I might have missed in this piece? Let me know in the comments. But if you guys want to learn more about any of the stuff I talked about in this video, you can check out our website, PhoneRena.com. This is John V, signing off.